when you try to scout us or prepare for us, you just know that you can either go one-on-one -on -one with those guys and pick your poison on, on them having an off night or bring extra help and knowing LeBron, maybe two of the best passing, most unselfish superstars in the league. And, and that's for us role players to be able to hit shots. And that's the, gonna be the key for us winning championships, hitting timely shots, uh, not fouling. And so for us, uh, I, I look at it as a, an opportunity for Kyle Kuzma to solidify his being the third guy, not only for the media, but for this team and, and, and what I view him as. Jared, it's uh, Dan Wakey. Uh, they have great beard. Um, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Rick Carlisle yesterday said that um, there might be, or he thinks that there's going to be crowd noise pumped in to games. There's going to possibly be virtual fans and stuff like that. Um, have you heard anything about any of that? And, and are you concerned at all about things getting kind of gimmicky, maybe, um, if that's what happens for quote unquote home court advantage? I've heard a little bit of that. I expect it to be very similar to a game without fans, if that makes any sense. I do think that you'll have some crowd noise. I do think that they, they have talked about it. You'll have, uh, I'm expecting our Lakers chant uh, their music when we come out for our intro. I'm expecting it how it has the piano, the different vibe, or different stuff during uh, during during the game. I think you, you have to make it, it's still a business. We're still a billion dollar industry and there's certain stuff that you have to do. I don't think they'll have virtual fans. I haven't heard that. Um, I know soccer's doing the cardboard. I think that might be one thing, but I think other players will go to games uh, and see just because nothing else really do on campus. But when it comes to the everyday on uh, the music, crowd noise during games, I expect that. I don't expect this just to be totally, uh, you know, no, no no sound whatsoever for the whole course of a game. Can we get the last two questions for Jared, please? Yeah, hey Jared, it's Tanya again. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, I've heard uh, like in baseball, people talking about how they're worried about the crowd um, opponents hearing what they're saying. Um, do you do you have any concerns about that? Not just opponents, but like on TV. There's a lot of things you guys say that usually people can't hear that without a crowd there will be much easier to hear. I mean, if I was the NBA, um, I know obviously there's some inappropriate language at times. I mean, though the, most of the game is not, but I would have a camera so you could hear. This is the one experience we, we're trying to sell you guys uh, for the fans at home that you know you don't have a crowd. What's one thing we can give you that we've never been able to give you guys before? And that would be the uh, in-game experience of what's trash talking, hearing Braun talk to refs, hearing James Harden you know, when it comes to you know how, he, how he's trying to get a call from a ref. I think this is something intriguing when you have trash talking with Pat Bev and other people. I think fans are intrigued by that. I think they want to hear what people have to say. I think it can bring excitement. So I'm not worried about it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that I have kids also, and they've heard a curse word here and there, and they know what's right and wrong. And through the heat of the moment, it happens. But um, I, I think this is a great opportunity to give fans and media an inside look at what really goes on in the NBA game. We got last question to Joe, please. Hey, Jared, Joe Varden. How we doing, sir? What is the most interviews you've ever done in a day? And in, in a scenario like that, where you're just doing all these interviews over and over, do you ever get worried or forget what you said, told one person, and worried that it was different than what you told another person? And just, do you have any kind of examples of that happening to you? I mean, the big, I, mean I think the most interviews I ever did was 13 years when I was uh, interviewing for every team at the Combine. And I think I did 14, 15 different interviews and they're asking you so many different questions. And I would say this, like if, you know, you guys ask me the, you know, the same question in different ways, I'm, I'm gonna try to give you different answers just for you guys could have different quotes on different stuff, but it's all gonna be, you know, the same truth, just in different ways. So for me, I don't really look at it like that. I just look at it of, of different ways where I can maybe give one media member a different nugget com compared to this, but it's all really the same of how practice is going or how my life is training for something for a draft. So no, I don't have no concerns. And I think some, some players either enjoy doing that and trying to give you guys different information for different media members or people just don't care and just give you the same answer every time. So to each his own.